All right, here we go. Ryan Bowers, welcome to Vlad TV. What's up, man? How are you doing, first and foremost? Because you know you have a very, uh, a very interesting and serious story. Yeah. And before we get into it, how are you doing right now? Right now, I'm doing a lot better. A lot better. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Because yeah. you know you're you're affiliated with uh, Nick Cannon. Yeah. You, know, you got the incredible shirt on right now. Yeah. And um, you know, me and you, me and him have been talking about you for a while. Yeah. And we wanted to wait until you got healthy enough to do this interview, and so here we are today. Yeah. So let's go ahead and start in the beginning with your story. Um, you grew up where? San Diego. Okay. Ocean Beach. Right. And in 2010, you appeared on MTV's Made. Yeah. And that was like your first kind of glimpse of entertainment. Yeah. Okay, so how was that whole experience like? It was kind of a trip to be on the maid shit because it was like a made up show. So they like are, I don't know, a lot of the shit is like forced. They're forcing you to do a bunch of different shit and um, I don't know, like talk to girls on the beach and rap at them freestyle and shit. So that shit is kind of funny. Okay. And you're a rapper. Yeah. On on that show. Yeah. And I guess you were coached by Homeboy Sandman. Yeah. Okay. You know Homeboy Sam Man? I know of him, yeah. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He's been around for a minute now. Yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah. So so you got on that show, and how was that whole experience? It was cool. I mean, they kind of made a fool of me the entire episode, so it, I didn't like the episode, how it came out, but the experience was cool. It was my first kind of shot at being thrown in front of the cameras and all that. Yeah. So you ultimately didn't like that whole experience? No, I ultimately didn't like it. Okay. So you go and do the Maid episode, and what happens afterwards? Afterwards, all the studios I went to, they were trying to charge me like 65 an hour, and all the places we went to for free with MTV, so it was kind of like, okay, I got to get my shit together and do my own shit. So I got my own studio and just worked at it and recorded myself and mixed everything down and just started putting out records. Okay. And so not a lot came from it. Okay. Now now during that time But it had, brought exposure though. Yeah. That's the one thing that it did bring. Like it brought people aware of who I was and people started following me and Okay. Following the and, story. And up to that point, did you have any any mental health issues? No. Nah. None at all. Not at all. Just a regular kid in San Diego rapping and, and having fun yeah i went through a lot of shit though like my mom and dad both like do drugs and shit not anymore but they used to so i had a crazy upbringing okay like hard drugs yeah so you were around that as a kid a lot yeah okay yeah i i, I know a lot of people that have been in that kind of situation where yeah, they come a lot home of and there's no lights on and is it yeah. that type of thing yeah crazy you shit. know evicted yeah you know, a lot. all the furniture on the front lawn that kind of yeah, thing crazy shit crazy living in shit. motel rooms yeah sleeping in the car sometimes and shit yeah basically being homeless yeah as a kid okay so so you had it pretty rough in that regard yeah Okay, but no, but no type of issues yourself. Were you dabbling in drugs yourself uh, early on? A little on? bit early, yeah. Okay, what kind? Of, what kind of I drugs? I fucked with ecstasy, the thiz, and everything okay. early on in high school, and then blow and. Okay, so you started getting into cocaine at one point. Yeah, at one point, yeah. In high school. Yeah. Okay. Were you and be- after high school too. Okay. Were like you- after the maid shit, I got real, real bad. Okay. That's when I first started seeing signs of the mental health shit, because off of the blow and everything, I was just all depressed and. Felt like, where's my life at now that this maid shit is over? Yeah. Yeah, so. Were you becoming addicted at that point? Yeah. Okay. I was off the blow heavy. All right, so you had a habit. Yeah. How are you supporting that habit? Uh, Working at a skate shop. Okay. So you weren't doing anything illegal to try to support that habit? No. Okay. I wasn't like selling it or nothing. You were just doing it? Yeah, I was doing it heavy. Okay. I could have made a lot of money if I would have been selling it. Yeah, <laughs> that opens up a whole new <laughs> a whole new avenue that you don't want to go down. Yeah, nah. So you, you do the Maid episode, you start getting into drugs. Yeah. Um, how did you and Nick Cannon end up hooking up? Me and Nick Cannon ended up hooking up. This dude, Ryan Anthony, was signed to the group that I was in, the Psych Board Druggies. And one night he played him some shit of mine, and then Nick called me off Ryan's phone and was like, yo, this Nick Cannon, what up? And he was like, when can you come to L.A.? And so I just came up to L.A. that very next day. 
and we were fucking with each other ever since. Okay, and and I've checked out your style. Like you have kind of like a real fast rap yeah. style, almost almost like a twister. Yeah. Kind of. You 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 ever heard those comparisons? Yeah. It's like a twister. Like a, I love twister. You know, Tech Nine. Tech Nine. Yeah. Who I you ended up with touring with yeah. later on and so forth. Yeah. yeah. So so the talent level was there. You just didn't really have an outlet for it. Yeah. So Nick came around, and what happened next? Nick came around, and then we finished up a project, and I did my own project, and we went on tour with Tech Nine, and did Wild and Out, and did a bunch of shit. Okay. Yeah, he's been really supportive this whole time. Now, uh, so PWD, the Psych War Druggies. Yeah. Who else was in the group? It was me, Ryan Anthony. Nick was like a big part of the group and shit. Okay. And uh, this dude, Hero, JR, uh, a couple heads, okay. Strikes, Don Dizzle. So was Kehlani around? Oh, yeah, Kehlani time? was in the group. Too. She was in the group as well. Yeah, in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Okay. So and what was, she branched out. What was Kehlani like during that time? Kehlani was like a little boy, low key. <laughs> she was a little chubbier back then. Nah, not chubby. She just like had a, this very like tomboyish style. Okay. She wasn't as elegant as she is now. Okay, I guess you were. In love she always with her. had her. She always had her swag to her. Yeah, but... I guess you were in love with her during that time. <laughs> a little yeah, bit, a little key, something, uh, a little low key, <laughs> low key. Yeah, hey, I don't blame you, man. She's a star. Yeah, she's you a know? star. She always has been. I'm sure everyone was in love with her during that. You know, then and now. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh, you guys put together this group, PWD, which I guess was around already, but then she she kind of became part of it and so forth. Yeah. Uh, how did Me and her were like the last ones to join the group. Okay. How did the group do? It was all right. It was cool. It was a cool experience for sure. Uh, the group shit was hard sometimes, though. Like, we caught fades a lot and shit. You guys were fighting a lot. Yeah. Okay. Why? Just over dumb shit. Or fighting each other? Yeah. Oh, okay. Like fist, <laughs> actual fist fights. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> G- groups are hard. The groups are hard. Groups are hard. I've, I've been in one or two groups. It, di- it didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm more of a solo guy myself. Okay. So Nick actually put some of his muscle behind this group. You guys went on tour with Tech Nine. Yeah. Um, you guys put together some projects. Yeah. Okay. DJ Premier was working with you guys as yeah. well. Yeah. So, you know, you guys some big names. And, and Crazy Bone, was that yeah. during that time? Yeah. Okay, that was like your favorite rapper? Yeah, that was my favorite rapper. Yeah, he, he's dope. Growing up. Yeah, I've interviewed him before. Yeah, he's dope. Okay, so what exactly happened with the group? We all just had our own shit happen. Ryan Anthony had kids, and JR's got some kids now and stuff. And then I had a crazy mental health breakdown. This is like the biggest breakdown I ever had. I was up for like five days straight, and my mind just eventually snapped. And then I, like, went crazy on Facebook and, like, fucking just publicly had this the breakdown. Okay. What do you think triggered that breakdown? Not sleeping. Like, staying up for days on end. Okay. Were you on drugs during that time? No. So just naturally you were up for yeah, five days. that's why it was a mental health thing. It was, like, uh-huh. something I had no control over. Like, I was smoking weed and shit, but I wasn't doing hard drugs. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to keep you up for five days. That'll no. probably put you to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And I just got on the schedule, like, Nick, Nick is on, like, being up for those that many days at a time, just working and working and working. And then it just, like, became not work at that point because my mind just snapped. Okay. So you have this mental breakdown. Yeah. And I guess you went to the psych ward? Yeah, I've been to the psych ward like four times now. Okay, so you Maybe start five. out with a group called Psych Ward Druggies and yeah. you end up in an actual psych ward. Yeah. What was the psych ward like? A psych ward is like a game of Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> it's like what does that mean? all these crazy characters and shit. You're jumping over <laughs> mushrooms and <laughs> the big Bowser and shit. <laughs> okay, I mean, it sounds funny, but it's probably not very funny. Yeah, no, nah, it get sucks. There. I'm sure jail is worse, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the problem, I mean, the people around you are probably a little more easy to deal with. Yeah, maybe. Okay. What were some of the craziest things you saw in the psych ward? Fucking people screaming at the top of their lungs, getting drugged into the rooms and shots in their ass and shit. One time they fucking stripped me butt ass naked and like made me spin in a circle and lay face down on the bed and they gave me a shot in my ass. Like it was fucked up. 
okay. a lot of that shit. And one of the times they fucking were shoving a catheter in my dick, like, Ugh. I don't know if I refused to piss or what, but that was the first time I went to the psych ward. And they had me cathetered up and shit. Okay, how long were you that psych ward? Each time has been like almost a week's stay. The first time was like a little over a week. Okay, and what 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 happened to make them release you? I just showed that I was like coming back to my senses. Okay. Yeah, because they can't. I don't think they legally can keep you for that long. Like they have to release people. So you're going in and out of the psych ward. Yeah. And this is happening how often? At first, it happened a lot. It's it still happened a lot, and I've went to the psych ward like two weeks ago. Okay. I was from a recent OD and shit. Okay. I had so, OD on a hundred Benadryl and thirty five Zans. Oh wow. Yeah, that was just recently. Okay. After the shooting and everything. All right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that. So you're going in and out of the psych ward, and then at one point you decided to try to commit suicide. A lot of times. What was the first time? What was the that The first about? time I OD'd. On? On a little bit of everything. I had had my gallbladder removed, so I had a bunch of pain meds, Vicodins, and I had lean. I had a little bit of a whole bunch of shit, mental health pills and shit. So you were and just I, taking... I mixed it all in a Gatorade bottle and chugged it. So you knew and what then, was going to happen if you drank that? Yeah. And you, then you, I tried was, to, you tried to kill yourself? I was yourself. unconscious for like four days. Why did you want to kill yourself? I don't know. It's just like, at that time, it was more like I just didn't want to live. And then it has just become like a romance with death ever since. Like just seeing people around me dying and everything and almost being jealous of that. Well, like, who, who around you was dying? Uh, I've had friends OD and people get shot and different shit. And it's just like almost feeling like you envy that like that their pain is just over like they don't have to deal with nothing else anymore it's a bad way to look at it but yeah well your your whole gallbladder got removed yeah after the first time uh before the first time before the first time yeah what hap- what is the gallbladder supposed to do in your body the gallbladder filters bile through your liver so you so no it's longer attached to your liver you no longer have one no so how does your body filter toxins and so forth uh, it's a little different. Yeah? My digestive system was a little fucked up after. Okay. Yeah. But you can live without a gallbladder. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, the suicide attempts continued. Yeah. I've OD'd like 10 times now at this point. 10 times? Almost. Was it always a, like a drug overdose? Yeah. And you would just mix whatever you get, can get your hands on? Yeah. I mean, the people that you would cop from, would they know? That your... I was going to try and kill myself? Yeah. No. And, and not want to be responsible for that? Because, you know, if that actually happened, they're going to connect the dots and now you're, you're part of a murder pretty much, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. Nah. So, so they had no idea? No. Nah. Okay. Well, then you actually start swallowing different things yeah that shit was crazy i swallowed a mechanical pencil fucking razor blades batteries like that was when shit got real desperate all right i was just like so desperate to not live that i was doing doing the most outlandish shit okay so let's let's kind of break each of these down you take a mechanical pencil and broke it in half broken in half and swallowed it i don't know why i thought that would kill me (laughs) How does it feel to swallow a mechanical pencil? It fucking hurt. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, it fucking hurt. And it stayed in me for like a week. How do they get it out? They go in through your throat with this like robot machine that like fucking grabs things and pulls it out. Okay. Yeah. When they pulled the mechanical pencil out, was that at all a wake up call of any sort? I think that was when I was unconscious. Well, but I mean, once you woke up. Uh, I mean, it was definitely, the whole thing was a wake-up call. Like, okay. what the fuck was I thinking? Well, and then... I was just so off and out of my mind. Well, then you swallowed batteries? Yeah. I almost jumped off the 805 in San Diego. It's like a super tall bridge. And I was up there, standing up there about to jump, and a uh, cop pulled up and 
chased me around for a minute and tackled me and then took me to the psych ward. And on the way to the psych ward in the cop car, I swallowed the battery. What kind of battery was it? I don't know, a double A. Double A battery. <laughs> how, they, how do they get that out? Same way. Same way. Yeah. 